We have made it to 5280s, a total awesome shop. Nostalgia got the better of me. I'm gonna end up picking one of these extreme dinosaurs. This is a toy I played with as a kid and it came out in 1996. Um, I'm also gonna get one of these wildlife danger packs. These are from the World Wildlife Organization and they're like playing cards of animals to help people become more invested in saving wildlife. Um, the other thing I'm gonna get is these vintage BMX 3D stickers. I remember seeing these as a kid they were like remnants of the 80s. Um, you know, occasionally you see someone who had it and they have them here, they have a whole pack. So a lot of nostalgia for me in regards to just like some of this stuff. There was some Burger King Star Wars um, glasses I was gonna get, but we didn't end up, I just felt like they were a little too much at the time right now just because we're traveling, but I'm definitely gonna pick up the set of them at some point, but this shop is amazing. Um, you, you gotta stop in here, whether you're with your parents or you're, you know, if you're born anywhere from the 90s back, you just gotta stop because it's so worth it and it brings back a lot of memories because the shop has just got so much stuff. So, Denise, what are you getting? A uh, Tamagotchi. One of the first Tamagotchis I ever had. Actually, the first one I ever had. Right, so they have an original exactly. one in the original box and Denise is gonna get it, which is pretty awesome. You look online and there are way more money. The guy has it here for like, 44 bucks, which may sound a lot, but it's really cheap compared to how much it is for its original packaging. So, so if you are here in Denver, this is a must stop. Um, I'll put the, the address down below, but this is such, uh, at least for me and I'm sure Denise, just such a, you know, a throwback. Uh, to childhood and to the remnants of the 80s. So if you're into any of this stuff, definitely worth your time. Yeah, yeah. So three which one colors? Yeah. Rocky Road? Jeez. <laughs> Rocky Thank Road. Denise, you're going to ham. Denise, Rocky Road is my favorite. And let me tell you a little something about Rocky Road. Rocky Road is one of the, the, one of the original only candies that is still made by hand in the, in the United States. Really? So wow. You still hand cut those. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to get one then. There's little variations in the size of those because they still cut them by hand. Wow. So, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Which yeah. one do you get? These guys too? The peanut bars? Yeah. Yeah, the peanut bars are classic. I don't know if you guys remember these. Lemon heads have to have fireball. I wasn't like the biggest lemon head guy, but. Not either, but I have to. <laughs> you know what? When in Rome, right? So, gonna be getting. These are the candies I'm picking up. I'm gonna get a second Rocky Road. Oh, no, there's Rocky Road. Yeah, why not? All right, let's double up. <laughs> Two Rocky Roads, I guess. Ooh. Damn, look how many candies. <laughs> Yo, you yeah, got so much candy. Yeah, I know. This is you might as well go by the, the McDonald's Wait, pail over here. Hold on. <laughs> oh my god. How was it? Oh my god. Alright guys, crazy fact, which I just learned, Tony's the owner of the store. But I have the Atlas Obscura book, and I'm sure many of you guys have maybe heard of it or st are starting to see it. It's a great book that has all the weird things. Uh, in different cities, places around the world, but he is number one for Denver. So I didn't even realize that. You read it, right, in the book? Did you? Did no, you I didn't read it, but that's what I've been basing a lot of the stuff we've been finding on from Atlas Obscure because they have like the hidden gems. Hold on, there's oh, sorry. 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 There's like hidden gems everywhere in their thing, so it's like the touristy stuff, but like the hidden stuff, the cool, weird stuff that I like. Um, right. Yeah, so he was just saying if you read them or check that out that they're actually he's listed as number one here for a shop 
um, in Denver, and then number two is this church of uh, cannabis. Cannabis. It says there's a cannabis church. There's number two, and he said they actually just stopped in. The owners of that just stopped in to check who number one was. So this place is number one in Denver for on the Atlas Obscura. So that's so cool. We had no idea, but it's so cool that he shared that. He was such a kind guy. He took gave Denise uh, like a free thing for her mom yeah. because he heard her talking about her mother. He really just like listens to people's story. He shared amazing yeah. stories about people, you know, just finding things with sentimental value and connecting it. And it was like, you know, things with their parents. There was a, you know, I'll let him tell his story when you come. You got to listen to him. Like, ask him about the TV Guide story. Because that one's really heartwarming and touching. And ask him about the Roger Rabbit bucket. Yeah. That's another great story. He told us a couple, but I don't want to ruin it. That's his tale and for him to share. So, I, you know, if you're here... This is a must go. I'm like, I feel so elated coming yeah, out. Yeah, so like, do I. I'm like staring into space because when you go, you see all these toys and all this memorabilia that of memories that you actually forgot about. And then when you see, you're like, oh yeah, like I remember exactly where I was when I was playing with this. Like, they have so many of the McDonald's Happy Meal toys that I like remember having, remember tossing to the side. Like, uh, it's just you feel like. I don't know how to like euphoric well you know what it's so interesting it. we talked about you know in there and this is getting a little heady so if this is not you know for you in this part feel free to fast forward about just a minute but me and tony were talking about how the 80s are such a weird pivotal time um in the progression of the like of the united states and the world right there was so much going on it, like the 70s is when people realized that like you didn't have to do cookie cutter nuclear family right and so there's a lot of divorce that we see in our grandparents and some of our parents if they're older there's a lot of pain and things like that unresolved stuff with family um you know you have the falling of the berlin wall in 89 me and tony were talking about you have so many different components of what comes together in the 80s like michael jackson and wwe mm -hmm. wrestling and power and you know there's all these Oscar. things you know and it's, it's it's just such a you know i think we're kind of starting to be in that era now with the change that's happening we're having like you know another renaissance in some way i hope you know of equity but that time was just like just a, a, a you know kind of like the the sh shock or recoil to the 70s and you know we have all these crazy things you know i'm a 92 baby Denise, you're 92, 91? 91. 91. 91. So the thing is that there's so much memory and so much happening, you know, the dream team for basketball and Michael Jordan, you know, in the, you know, coming into the, like out of the eighties, you know, you, and so the shop is like 80% eighties, Tony says, um, maybe even a little bit more. He said he has over 6,000 items in inventory. Um, and he, and he said he can just know when something's gone. You know, he, when he's doing inventory, when he's looking around, so. Cause you're on camera, we just. Uh, it's just so cool. Do you want to show, do you want to show <laughs> what you got? So let's show what we got, what we picked up. This vintage ass Tamagotchi. My first Tamagotchi is still in the packaging. It's $44. He gave it to me for 42. Look at this. Well, the cool Absolutely part too, the cool gorgeous. part, of, the cool part about it too is that Tony, really hears you and and it really works with you you know he, this is his shop and his livelihood and he could easily just charge you the true value or charge you and he really tries to be fair like i'll give him that he was really fair on the pricing like um let's see what did i get i got the extreme dinosaur this is a it may seem silly you might not remember it's like a spinoff from what was it street sharks but okay. it, i had a lot of like a lot of memory in here um playing with my cousin uh, who passed away um at 20 he was 22 when he passed away and like this is a toy that he would play with me and my other cousin alex and max they would all play with these um when we were children so this is just like a lot of nostalgia for me um we also got a ton of candy things like that um but yeah you know just a great store just a really you know tony and his 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 girlfriend just incredibly kind people so i just want to make a big plug for this um, for their shop and just for you know what they stand for and what they're doing What's up guys? We arrived at Mile High Comics next destination. This is the largest comic book store in the world um, Yeah, take a look at this This place is insane Look at these look at these Conan the original X-Men Iron Man, look at that original Iron Man. You'll peep that price. The incredible Iron Man, bro. This is insane. This place is the real deal. Biggest comic book store in the world. And they got things that are out the wazoo. Yo, look at this X-Man. 
this is nuts so crazy so much history so much stuff to offer you guys have to come here if you're in denver mile high comic books not only do they have i mean look at this they have an upstairs for figurines they have trade backs look at the inventory in the back they got more stuff they got statues and action figures they got like, inventory in the back magic cards this place don't play around so if you're into any of this kind of stuff you definitely need to make sure that you come over here and spend some time what it is what it do guys so we are here this morning uh we ended up sleeping at another pilot station um last night because we wanted to kind of get on our way to the, to the great sand dunes so we are here outside colorado springs and we've about a three hour drive and we're going to go to the sand dunes today our hope is to do some sandboarding um there's a few locations that are still open right now even covid season that are just going to be sell, uh, like have rental boards so due to everything that's like kind of panned out and i've talked about in you know prior prior videos and prior days um we shifted our schedule and we're going to be after today actually heading out. I've been sandboarding one other time. I went in Bolivia. Denise, this is her first time, but I've never done the sled and we just got a sled and a board. So I'm like uber excited. They they said potentially you can get up between 40 and 50 miles per hour on the bigger dunes. So we're gonna try to try to send it and you know, huck it for a solid run. Um, the one thing is too, is that um, Right now, there's a bit of a rainstorm. I don't know if you can see in the backdrop, that's, uh, here, I'll show you guys in the back. There are some of these clouds looking pretty ominous. So if there is lightning, they uh, will be taking us off the off the dunes. So we're trying to get in there nice and quick um, and get this sorted out so that we can uh, have a good experience. So probably gonna see me next and Denise next on the dunes out of breath. Uh, the average ride, uh is about you know amount of rides is about five the uh office said that where we got the uh board so we're hoping to you know try to make it worth it and get that many in but yeah you excited but yeah the visitor center is open till five so you okay. can see yes i'm very excited i feel like i'm gonna be natural on the board but dude like if it's your first time this is this pretty difficult but i'm pretty confident that i'm gonna take this like a champ Nice. <laughs> so we're about to head out. We'll see how it goes. So we will see you guys on the slopes. This is what it do, guys. We are at the National Sand, or the Great Sand Dunes, or the Sand Dunes National Park here in, I think it's Mosca, Colorado. I'm sorry for the wind, but it is crazy out here. Look at this. We are hiking towards this behemoth of sand dunes nestled here at the edge of the uh, part of the Rocky Mountain Range. Um, it's crazy. There's a storm coming in, but we're lucky because right now the wind's so strong, it's blowing over the ridge. So we've had very minimal rain, but the great part about it is everyone's leaving because it's so cold. They said the sand's hot. I think it was like 65 degrees. So it's really cold, but look at all these people leaving. So we're about to get a lot of this to ourselves, which is awesome. So I can break. Oh yeah, look, I see you're getting a little break over there too. This is exciting, everyone's leaving, but it is cold. Yeah. Whew, it is cold. How, you cold? Yeah, I had to put on a long sleeve over my teeth. It's freezing. It I like should have wore long sleeves. That's 60, how cold it is. Yeah. And at the dune, dune place, they were warning us about burning our feet. So really? it's so crazy how quick the weather shifts. The sand is very much cold. Yeah, this is nuts. It's beautiful. All right, we'll see you on the way up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry if the wind is bad, but we are here in the middle of the Great Sand Dunes. Man, look at this. Yeah, so we were on our way up. We started heading out here. We were all the way down there in the distance. 
and this like crazy rainstorm squall thing i don't even know what you want to call it with like the sand whipping across the dunes whipping into our legs we were forgoed rain jackets because we thought the storm would pass because the wind was so fast i don't know if you, i mean i'm sure you can hear the wind in the mic so i'm gonna try to turn sideways make it a little better but it's just insane like it blew over this mountain range like i don't know if you can see on the film but like these clouds are like racing across this ridge line and before it was like black midnight and i have the mod the mod for the gopro so my gopro right now isn't waterproof because the door is off so i like couldn't really film any of it but it was just absolutely insane but i mean look how gorgeous it is like, look at that down there like this is so crazy this is like three times as big as the bolivian sand dunes i've been to um we're trying to sled and sandboard but the sand as you can see is wet so it got really sticky we weren't able to put wax on the boards um but we may be hiking up higher here uh the summit's up to the top i really would love to go there but it's rough um you know not being from the mile high you know area or city you know here in colorado it, it's quite difficult so um, we're definitely feeling the altitude even though we've come down quite a lot um it were just out of shape. That's so struggles, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so the plan is, is to take some photos, maybe send it, send it higher, try to go from the top all the way down. And we've done two runs already. One was like really crummy. Second one was pretty good. Denise got all the way to the bottom. It was a trooper. She like went and went down something like this over here. Like, I don't know if you can tell on camera how steep it is, but like, it's so steep, it's rounded. Like, it, 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 it's like uh, the top of a half pipe or like when you drop in, it's like, you know, like how it gets concave, it's like reverse. It just like, it's like when you go down a double black diamond or something, it's like around at the top. So these are quite steep. So we're gonna try to wax up now that it's dry. See if we can get a couple goes, see if we can get uh, some of our epic sweet gnar and film, but uh, don't hold your breath. So let's cut to some B-roll and see how, uh, you know, epic it comes out. Guys, this place is incredible. Like, look at these flowers. They're just like growing right amongst the desert and the sand. So incredible. Man, so worth hiking up. It was a hard hike and definitely <laughs> out of shape, but you know, one of those things where you push through and you're so glad you did and it's just so worth the aerial view. I was just talking with Denise and I feel like as humans we really love that aerial view or drone shots because we can't fly and we just love to see land and topography and just from such a different perspective. So, man. And just over the next ridge, Denise leads us to this. Just like, what the hell? Oh my God. Like, look at those clouds. They, like, stay perfectly on the mountain. Feeling super lucky right now. Just, just feeling so lucky. Just like, like, you know, I don't know, like, you know, I, I don't know if, like, hopefully, you know, you're getting out if you're watching, you know, my channel or you're traveling. And if you haven't, I just, I don't know if, know if I have words to adequately explain when you breathe the place. You know, I'm really about, uh, I know with like my page and long way to go dot travel, I'm really about like, I, my motto is like, I'm really about like travel and seeing places, but don't visit a country, live a country. And that's really important to me, or, you know, cause this is, uh, this is our country. Well, not ours, it's borrowed, you know, it's native peoples, but you know, for all intents and purposes, this is my home. So it's just incredible to look out and see this and just like feel it like in your bones and breathe it in you know so man just feeling really grateful so we're gonna send it down this and head back to the parking lot so we're gonna hit this ridge down to this one we're gonna send it over uh there's a big dip you can't see down here we're gonna hike that one and there's two more big downhills and when I say big, I mean like big like this or like Massive. that. So that's the plan. 
Um, we're gonna head down now and hope for the best. Wish us luck. All right, getting ready to send it. Oh, here we go, look at this guy. <laughs> oh, you ready? <laughs> Remember, lean back. Yeah, lean back, lean back, there you go. There you go, lean back. Yes! Woo! Oh! Oh, about to eat it. <laughs> Oh, what's up, bro? Swicknar. <laughs> oh. Uh. Oh, that's pretty high. Right, here we go. Oh, gosh. Oh, my God. This is fast as shit. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh there's so much sand. Oh, yeah. We're almost there. There's a little bit here. So stand it up. Just stand it up all the way. Even if you fall for stand up. Yeah, lean forward. Lean forward. All right, dig it in. Edge. Okay. <laughs> that was a valiant effort. Good job. Okay. On to the on to the next one. Or do number five. All right, Denise, you're done. <laughs> you're off the hill. Did any part of that look cool? <laughs> I I can't do it. I, I can't see the footage, but I can only imagine. It looks epic. Wow, guys, look at Denise. She told me this dinky ass hill. She's like, you're going too slow. Let me do it. Look at her. She said it was going too slow. Look at this little dinky hill. She said it was going too slow down the hill. Oh my God, Denise. You should be wearing a helmet. <laughs> oh, watch your brakes. Are they over 300 degrees? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are on our way out. We made it all the way to the top. Got some amazing photos. Some great footage of the dunes. Denise crushed it today on her sand sled. The good old sand board. I did, I did all right. You'll see some of the footage. Fell a couple times. Wait, show them where we went to like yeah. the vastness of this. So Denise wants to show you. Uh, you guys can see those little people. Why don't you point your finger? Point up there so I can see them. Right. Oh, there. no. Here are, keep going up. Up, 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 up. Left. Left. Up left down a little bit all right guys we went all the way to the tippy top basically denise is having a hard time pointing it out <laughs> well, you have the gopro here give me okay like much easier so oh wait yeah. <laughs> somewhere over there <laughs> okay regardless we had a great time it was a lot of fun sandboarding is you know it's really hard you know if you can sandboard or get anywhere on a sandboard you're gonna do just fine snowboarding skiing surfing uh you know you're not meant to wear shoes in these ones that you rent so you get a lot of like toe bite literally um you know because in snowboarding it's heel toe it's really hard to go toe at least for me my toes hang over so it was a lot of fun a lot of crashes a couple good runs but we're headed out 
gonna start our journey back to New York. So we're gonna head up into Kansas. I don't know, Denise wants to see a tornado or something. So we'll just, hopefully, yes. we, hopefully we tornado don't, but. And the Wizard of Oz Museum. Basically she wants to be a storm chaser or of some sort. So we're gonna go there. We're gonna see what we see. Um, we'll see how far we get tonight, no knowing. So we are gonna head out and uh, this is the end of Colorado. So this has been a wonderful trip in Colorado rolling with the punches um even though there's been a lot of changes um i think we did a good job um denise is really flexible denise was really excited about certain things and we weren't able to get to mesa verde or to mount sniffles for the hike to these forest fires and closures of i-70 and things like that but um we weren't able to get to mount sniffles because the closures of i-70 and things like that but we are just really happy the way the trip turned out so done and tired that uh she's letting her big toe hang out of her underwear <laughs> not her underwear <laughs> hang out of her sock look at that <laughs> look at them chicken nuggets <laughs> going to work today it's a hard day's work though so thanks for tuning in for the colorado portion we've had a great time colorado you've been great good job with the covid safety you got your state is doing great you make us feel safe we've had a wonderful time so this is a long way to go. Zach Jones, we're out.